Here we are. Okay, guys. I am so sorry. Right now, I'm in my um, work area. I'm at the office, and I just had to take a little bit of a time out. First of all, to apologize to you guys. I just made a video showing you how to get good time lapse with your Canon EOS M. Last night, I found a couple of very important settings that I missed on my last video that I should include in the whole tutorial on how to get great time lapse with the EOS M. And that's the whole purpose of this video. I'm just going to show you a couple of settings that are so vital to get amazing, epic time lapse. I'm talking about some smooth transition, like, oh, pff, just don't take my word for it. Just look at the following samples and you'll see what I mean. so smooth right i mean that was amazing way better than the last time lapse i did on my how to video i'm going to show you two ways to get great time lapse with your canon eos m and they both have their purpose and i'm going to share my reasons uh, when you should use which option and why you would use them all right guys so here we are with our canon eos m fully loaded with magic lantern and right off the bat, you can see that my shutter speed is at one eighth of a second. Slowing down your shutter speed really in makes the overall time lapse look so epic and smooth. Um, I'm just gonna show you the one setting that I forgot to mention on my last video, and I feel so bad because you guys took the time to watch the whole tutorial. Now that tutorial still stands as is, but we just gotta remember one little setting. Let's go dig in right in. So here we are in the Magic Lantern movie menu. And of course, you all know about the 4K time lapse at two frames per second. Um, you could change whatever you want at that. But I forgot to tell you guys, use the shutter range. Now using the shutter range at full range, usually this is off. And that means that um, Magic Lantern will lock the shutter speed or the shutter range it doesn't go any lower than 133 of a second 133rd of a second i believe it is and that is because anything lower that than that will make your movies look really funky and choppy and weird so that's why the magic lantern locks the sh shutter range but if you unlock it or if you say full range that unlocks the full range whatever the Canon's EOS M shutter range is, it's open now available in your camera. So if we head back over to our camera, so now it's one fifth of a second. You notice if you just scroll around one sixteenth of a second. So anywhere around one fifteenth to one tenth of a second is gonna give you really smooth cinematic. Why do I keep saying cinematic? It has nothing to do with cinema. It's just gonna give you some nice smooth video time lapse and it just makes the whole effect even better. So that's it guys. That's the only thing I forgot to mention on my last video. Now the post processing is exactly the same. You put all your clips that are saved on the SD card into the BNG or MLV, export them to Cinema Lossless, the DNG Lossless, import them into the BNG, Da Vinci, you could set your speed time to like 800, 1200, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever percentage looks best for your video, you know, just play around with the speeds and that's it. So the post process is exactly the same. But you know, guys, I'm going to give you, since you are here in this video, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Another way to get even better time lapse, like I'm talking about the true real frame by frame time lapse is going over to the interval going over to the camera settings so let's move over to the right and we're going to have intervalometer setting right here now we turn that on and of course heading over to the q mini you will be able to 
fine tune this setting. So I have it to take a picture every two seconds. Now this is gonna be like real photos. It's gonna take stills. And if you're in raw, you're gonna be taking a lot of raw photos. So make sure you have a big SD card or just switch over to the JPEG so you could have small files and therefore take longer time lapse. But regardless, you could do whatever setting you want. This is gonna be like real photos. So I got it to take a picture in every two seconds. The starter trigger, you have your choice either to, once I leave the menu, it's gonna start the time lapse. I don't like that. Or you could do the half shutter. If by pressing the half shutter button, it'll start the time lapse. I don't like that either. I the one I like is just to take a picture. So just fully press the shutter button will initiate uh, the intervalometer or your time lapse, and it just goes on until you tell it to stop. And that's the last setting we have here on the menu. Stop after how many shots? The cool thing is when you switch over to the photo side on your dial up top in the pictures, when you head back into the intervalometer menu, you're going to see that it's, it shows you like how long the time lapse is going to take. Taking photos is about 10 minutes or so, depending, of course, on your shutter speed. But 300 shots is about 10 minutes and at 24 frames per second will equal to 12 second video. So that's really cool. It does the math for you. Really neat. All right. So once you are on the main screen, it's just ready to start the time lapse once you fully press the shutter button. So pressing the shutter button is going to initiate and start our time lapse. And that's it, guys. Um, there you have it, guys. That's how you do it. So, guys, what do you all think about the time lapse with this Canon EOS M? Now that you know how to set up your camera even better than the way I taught you on the last video. But again, the other video still comes in handy when you're in post-production. It's the exact same thing you want to do with the files that you shoot with this. And uh, even the both ways that I taught you, shooting in video and in the stills mode, they're both going to be the same post-process in DaVinci Resolve. So definitely, if you want to check out how to edit your timelines in DaVinci, take a look at that last video. But in this video, I was just hoping to share those two different ways of shooting. So lastly, I just want to talk to you about which mode is best for you to shoot at for your time lapse. So the difference is basically with the stills one, the only major difference, which is actually a big difference, is that you could put the use the intervalometer to pause between each shot and you could tell it how however long you set it to pause between the shots will really really have a great effect on how your overall time lapse will look at the end for example say if you pause like 15 10 10 15 seconds between shots that is gonna be a long time lapse. like you're gonna be waiting there for a long time but the final result will be like you will have a super epic very like you're going to be going like ludicrous speed with with all that time in between cut off between each shot it will make your sequence go even faster smoother so you really have great control using the still mode but with that said shooting in the video mode you got so many other advantages that you know you'll be shooting in the same aspect ratio as the videos. For example, when I shoot 3K with my EOS M, I like to shoot in the 2.35 by one aspect ratio. And with the time lapse, it's no difference. 4K will still keep the same black bars. It will still shoot in the same aspect ratio, but with a higher resolution of, or you're shooting over 4K. And you know, that's just gonna be really nice in post. You don't have to worry about stretching or cropping anything. It's all gonna be the same. Whereas the JPEG ones on the still side will be square. And that is nice to fill up the entire screen, but then you have to add the black bars, So it doesn't look kind of strange going from cinematic black bars to all of the sudden the whole screen is filled up with your image. You know, that's just lazy me talking here. That's just a, a nice thing about using the uh, time last feature in the video side. That's one of the uh, conveniences of shooting that and the other convenience is that you won't have a bunch of photo stills uh, laying around in a folder in your computer you just have one video file that has the whole sequence together 
and that's another advantage of using this you'll be able to edit that video in mlv or like i do in davinci resolve with that said you can't go wrong with either or whether it's the stills or the movie the canon esm can take some amazing time-lapse footage and i'm just so psyched about being able to get even more control over the setting on my time lapse and i i am so looking forward to getting more epic time lapse and posting them here in the channel so if you haven't done so subscribe because i will be putting some in the near future but anyway guys i'm really grateful for you to coming back to the channel and watching this updated version of the time lapse video definitely my last video that i posted showing you how to do the prep work in the camera and da vinci it all still stands you just gotta remember to do the shutter range get the full shutter range to get even better more epic time lapse on the video side as well as a new way to do it using the stills so guys if this video was helpful to you guys i would really appreciate your thumbs up sharing thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one peace